Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. So the knife we're going to be customizing today is the Kaiser Momo. Now this is basically a folding kitchen knife, as you guys can see from the design. And you have a very large handle. So if you do have large hands, this would be perfect. I love the blade shape. And you have a satin finish in 154cm steel. Uh, I've never had any issues with 154cm. And it sharpens easily. It holds a blade edge very well, but I will be etching and stone washing this blade as part of the customization part of it. But I do love the handles. I love everything about this knife, but of course, when it comes to the knives that I have in my collection, I got to customize them. I mean, that's kind of what I do on my channel. So I, I had to do something with it. So here is what I decided to come up with. So kitchen knives usually have wooden handles. So what I did is I took some spalted maple here. You can see just really beautiful stuff. It's got a nice chatoyancy in the right light. But it has these spalted sections here with the black streaks. So one thing that's interesting about spalted maple is these black streaks are actually a type of fungus. At least that's what I was told. Uh, if you guys know more about that, uh, let me know down in the comments. But really, really excited to use this material. So I think it'll be fitting for this Momo since it'll be since it'll be used in the kitchen and I think it'll work quite well. So I already cut out my little window here of the exact shape of the scales and I placed my lines on here. You can't see them but I placed my lines uh, exactly where I'm going to be putting or what part of the wood I'm going to be using. As you can see there it gives you a little window. This is a little trick I came up with quite a bit ago just so if you have a material and you don't know what section to use this comes in handy and allows you to select your uh, favorite section of the material. So with that being said, I will see you guys down in the shop and we're going to get right to it. So just quickly taking apart the knife and I noticed that there's not that many screws, which is really nice when it comes to disassembly. And then the two pieces for the scale, which has a bolster and a scale, is going to be not the best thing to use as a template. So I'll be using the liners as a template. As you can see here, I am using my CNC to create the pivot hole, which makes it more accurate. And it comes out a lot cleaner. And I won't have to deal with any issues of it lining up with the liners. So you can see really clean. And both pieces of my material are different thicknesses but I'll make some adjustments later in the video. Now I'm gonna be using the pivot pin and a rubber ring to hold the pivot pin onto the new material and the liner. That way it doesn't fall out and I can position the liner where I need it to be while I'm drilling out the holes where the screws are gonna go for the scales. Now, before I started drilling into the material through the liner, I chose a drill bit that was slightly smaller than the threaded hole in the liner. That way I can pinpoint the center of that hole and have it just small enough for the screw to actually thread into the new material, which will hold that liner in place while I drill out the other hole for the second screw. Now that I have both holes drilled out, I am using a slightly larger bit to enlarge the hole so that it will allow the screw to actually go through that hole smoothly and it won't bite into the material, which you can see here, it goes through smoothly. The next step after drilling out the holes and enlarging them is to countersink the holes so that the screw head can sit flush or just below the material surface. That way it doesn't interfere with the ergos. And as you guys can see right here, it's just below the surface. And the bottom of the screw is just out enough to where it tightens into the liners. 
Here I am tightening down the screws into the liner and making sure everything lines up, which it does. And now I'm marking the body screw holes where I will be countersinking for those body screws, allowing them to sit into the new material. As you can see there with the old one, I'm just basically going to be copying just that. Before I started drilling countersunk holes into the material, I chose a slightly smaller drill bit to locate the center of those holes. And then I switched over to a slightly larger size drill bit to enlarge those holes, allowing enough room for those body screws to fit into. Here I am just using the liners as a template to mark the shape of the new scales. And then after I do that, I'm going to remove them. And then from this point, I'm going to take them to the vise, clamp them in, and then just use my disc grinder to cut out a rough shape around the outside of that outline that I just made. Now I'm using my table grinder to get a rough finish around the outline that I marked. And keep in mind, give yourself a little extra room when doing this because the material likes to fray a little bit and sometimes it might even chip. So always give yourself that little extra material around the edge. As I mentioned earlier in the video, my material for both scales are a different thickness. So what I am doing here is I am manually milling material off the scales to make them the exact same thickness. And give yourself a little bit of extra thickness because as you see here, that mill bit will actually rip out some material and kind of make it rough. So I gave myself extra material so that when I manually remove it with sandpaper, I can have a nice straight finish. Here I am tightening down the liner lock liner to the material so that I can use my pencil to mark the recessed area where the liner lock needs to just sink down just a bit for that ball detent to pass the blade surface, allowing for a smoother and more drop shut action. After marking the liner lock section, I am using a smaller mill bit to manually mill out that recessed pocket. Now keep in mind when you are creating this recessed area, a little goes a long way. Now here I installed the original scales just to make sure everything lines up perfectly with the new scales. And what I'm going to be doing is using the router bit to rough cut the shape of the new scales to the old scales. That way it fits up perfectly. And then I also added an extra layer of tape to the bearing on that router bit, just so that I don't touch the blackened liners affecting that black coating. Now before I start sanding down the outer edges of the new scales, I have various pieces of material to wrap my sandpaper around to get a nice clean finish on the outside of the scales. And I'm starting with 120 grit just to get a remove quite a bit of material. And then I will finish it off with 320 grit to get a really, really nice clean finish. Here on this scale, I am marking the recessed area for thumb access to the liner lock. And once I mark that, I'll remove the liner. And then I'm going to use a file to remove the material. And then you'll see later, I'll use a flat small bar with sandpaper wrapped around it to really clean it up and get those nice sharp lines.
The next thing I'll be doing is taking my pencil and creating some straight lines that will not only visually make the handle more pleasing, but even more comfortable in hand. Now I'm just mirroring those lines onto both sides of the scales. And after I do that, the next step I'm gonna do is taking my Dremel and removing as much material as I can before doing this by hand. Now make sure to keep behind the lines you marked and give yourself a little bit of extra space. But now that that's done with the Dremel, I am gonna take a flat bar and use various grits of sandpaper to fine tune it and get it exactly where I need it up to those lines. After finishing the scales with 320 grit, and I'm happy with the results, I take my favorite oil, which is tongue oil. Not only does it smell great, but it hardens over time and really protects the material you're putting it on. As you can see, it also enhances the color, which I really, really love. All right, so we're back up in the studio, and we're finished with all the custom parts. We'll start with the scales. And I am really, really happy with how the spalted maple scales turned out. And in certain light, you can see that chatoyancy. It's really hard to get it on camera, but in the right light, it does shift and move. And I think it just looks really, really good. And I love that honey, that honey color added to it after I put the tongue oil on it. And of course, the spalted sections with the, those really, really dark black lines. I think it looks really, really good. I did create a arched bevel here underneath where your fingers sit when it's under the knife. And then I also created a nice flat spot or flat beveled section here at the top. Let's see if I can get it in the camera. It's hard to see on this material, but it is very, very comfortable in hand. And I also gave it a pretty aggressive beveled edge here in the front. So when you pinch grip it, it feels very comfortable as well. Now, the only issue I had was, so this is the pocket clip side. Now, the problem was, you can see these two uh, holes here, or uh, recessed areas for the hardware to hold the knife in place. You guys can see it here on the original. So you have it here on the show side scale, and then here on the pocket clip side, you can see that it interferes, so this hole to go over the hardware. Uh, they didn't have one on this one, which is really weird that Kaiser didn't do that. So it doesn't hold, the only reason why I kept the pocket clip off was because it doesn't hold the liners tight to the backspacer. And there was a little gap and I didn't like it. So for now, I'm gonna go without the pocket clip and then I'm gonna figure something else out to put the pocket clip on. But for the time being, I am still very happy with it. Really quick, I also created a spalted maple, same material, backspacer, just because I wanted a good, a good consistent break between the black liners and the material, just so visually it looks pleasing. And I'll show you guys that when, uh, when it's assembled. Super happy also with the false hamon or faux hamon etch that I like to do on some of the blades. The stone wash came out really, really well. I sharpened it with a, an aggressive edge. I like my blades to bite on the cutting edge. And I like how the hamon kind of vanishes at certain angles. And then as, in certain light, it pops out. So just really complements basically all the dark. I really wanted the, the dark effect to go with the, the spalted streaks in the maple handles. So I think I achieved just that. And also really quick, what I did was I gave the liners a stone wash too, just to kind of have a little more character. And I just, I love a good stone wash and also to match the uh, stone wash on the blade. So with that being said, let's put this thing together and see what it looks like.
So here it is all assembled. And like I said earlier, I just love how the black accents go really, really well with those spalted streaks in the maple. I think it looks really, really good. And here's the backspacer. Like I said, I really like that clean breakup between the black liners and the lighter colored backspacer and handles or scales. And here is the pocket clip side. Just really, really love that, that material. I wish I could get it in camera for you guys, but it does do its shifting thing a lot better in person. But let's check it out opened up. Still has the same great action, but there it is. I just, I really like how it just all goes together. I mean, it just looks like a, a kitchen knife that you'd see in one of those wood blocks that you slide in, but obviously this is a folder version, but really, really digging the that spalted maple. I think it looks good. Uh, as always, let me know down below what you guys think of how this thing turned out, but I think it just looks really, really good with that, that etched and stone washed blade. Just a lot darker contrast between the blade and the, the handle scales. Couldn't be happier. Really, really enjoy the uh, the ergos on this knife. Now, before I even customized this knife, I really loved it. The pocket clip wasn't even an issue, but without it, it just feels really, really good in hand. Balancing point is just a little bit behind that front finger choil, so very light. It's a lot lighter. Uh, I'll put up on screen what it used to weigh versus what it weighs now, but it does feel a lot lighter, and the action is still great. Another thing that I like that Kaiser did with this Momo is this little cutout here section where you can squeeze your thumb in there to gain access to the liner, which works really, really well. And all I did was I based it off of the original scale. I created just the, maybe just a little bit, a little bit deeper. So you do have more access to that liner lock, as you guys can see right there. And I did this one by hand, as I explained in the, uh, the customization part of the video, but easily accessible, still very, very smooth. I mean, that blade is a giant blade, so just super smooth. I might get some skiff bearings for it, but honestly, I don't even think it needs it. Great sound, great action. And really quick, again, just wanted to give you guys a close look at the beveled areas I did. So underneath, I did a, a arced area. So when you are handling this knife, it feels really, really good on your fingers. It feels a lot thinner too, even though the scales are a little bit thicker than the originals. So it fills the hand a lot more. And then you have that top bevel up here in this section here, you can see it. So it tapers from the middle of the handle down to the front, also making it more, just more slimline, more comfortable. And then those beveled edges in the front, you can see are a lot more beveled than the sides and the back, so that when you do a pinch grip, uh, you have something to land on it. It feels comfortable that way as well. But overall, really happy with the decision I went with, with these certain bevels, just making it a lot more comfortable. And also for the backspacer, I decided to bump out the, the back section just a little bit more, just because I really wanted to have more of the material exposed. And I think it just, it's a very subtle touch but it pops out just enough to where you notice it. And then I also tapered it from the top corner, you can see right there, towards the bottom. I think it just gives it a, an extra little uh, fancy touch, if you will. But I think it completes it nicely with these other bevels. But there is the custom Kaiser Momo. And as always, you guys, thank you for the support. Really appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you guys on the next one.